should just say it's a one-time use. Like, don't play with me. Hey guys, welcome back. So I'm gonna be talking about products that I bought last year that I really, really regret buying. Yes, you know, being a beauty vlogger, it does happen. You buy a bunch of stuff, you try it out, and then eventually you're gonna end up with a lot of crap that you wish you didn't buy. <laughs> so if you're new here, please subscribe. If you're an oldie but a goodie subby, hey boo. So, all right, let's just like dive right in. The first one, um, I'm just gonna say this is a cult favorite and I just wanna say, just because this did not work for me, doesn't mean that it won't work for anybody else or that it's a bad product or that I hate the brand. Just know that not everything works for everybody. So if this these products are anything that you like and personally love using, that's cool, you know, like good for you. I'm so glad that it works out. For me, you know, these were like a big no. So the first one here, this is the Camille Rose Naturals Curl Maker. It's their curling jelly. And this is quite pricey. You can get it at Target. Here's the thing. I just saw so many people raving about it and the curly like Facebook groups that I belong to um, on YouTube. I just felt like, damn, like I gotta get these for my twists, my twist outs, my flat twists out. Anything that I wanna do to set my hair, I have to try this. And I was like convinced that I was gonna love it and I really wanted to. But this was such a big freaking flop for me. It was a waste of my money. Um, and now, you know, I have to give this away, this awesome product that I'm sure is gonna work well for somebody else with a looser curl pattern because you know I do have 4C hair. It just was, uh-uh. I will never again buy this thing. I might try their Twisting Butter. If you guys have tried that, let me know if that works. But the curl maker, I mean, come on. I don't wear wash and goes like that. Mm -mm, not for my 4C hair, so this, this is a big no. Now, next up, this is from a really popular drugstore brand. And I actually love this brand. They have the best brushes but I saw this little thing right here and I'm gonna show you guys but when I saw this blush palette in Target I was like oh I gotta have that look at these these are screaming beautiful brown skin put it on you know and yeah at first it looked great until I started breaking out like crazy from this I mean, what in the hell, even though it's cheap, you know, you guys gotta like respect your skin. So what in the hell are they putting on this stuff to make someone break out all in their cheek area? It was pretty obvious that this is the only thing. I hadn't changed anything else in my makeup routine. I will say I do have sensitive skin, but I didn't really expect harsh stuff to be in blush. And I was really disappointed that e.l.f. would mass manufacture a product like this. I just feel like, yeah, it just looks so beautiful and it was like the promise of something so good. And now I'm just left with this. So I've gotta give this away to probably my sister to see if she likes it. But if you have sensitive skin, stay the F away from this blush palette because it will mess your skin up. Now this is a product that it's not quite that bad altogether, but for me, it's just boring. It's, it's really boring. So something possessed me to buy this Too Faced Natural Matte Palette. And I don't know, I can't say what I was thinking when I bought this, but let me just show you guys these colors, okay? Look at these colors. They're just boring. Like, I can find any one of these colors in another palette. I just felt like, yeah, you know, if you're a businesswoman, this might be really nice, but eventually, you know, maybe you should just think about putting some unique colors in here. 
like just at least one to make this palette a little bit more appealing. It just looks super boring. And I mean, I still have to use it because I'm that type of person. Like, I don't want to waste something if I can actually use it. But whenever I'm just like, oh, it's sitting there in the corner, I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> I gotta pull it out, you know. I guess I'm just not a super boring type of eyeshadow person. I like a little bit of shimmer, a little bit of jazz. But if you are somebody that just likes neutral mattes, sure, this might be for you. And, okay, I'm, I, I couldn't stop. The fact that this thing was like 50 bucks, yes. 50 bucks for some boring eyeshadows that anybody else, any other brand makes, kind of pisses me off. So that's why I'm still trying to use it because you guys, it was $50. Okay, so next I've got this little, um, it's like a little glitter. I saw this at Walmart and initially I was like, ooh, glitter and it's only like a dollar? <gasps> awesome, because I, I didn't know where to find any glitter. Like I, where I live, I didn't have any, you know, NYX glitters, like at the drugstore, it just wasn't around. So, I bought these things, like I said, they were a dollar, so I thought it was a really great deal. When I went to put my glitter glue on, and then I dipped this in, like you can only use this for one use because it's so messed up. Like, you just can't use it wet because you know once you dip your brush in the glitter, apply it to the glitter glue, and then you go back in, your brush is gonna be a little bit wet from the glue. And that totally messes up this glitter. And I'm pissed now because there's still more left. I can see it, but I just can't use it. And even though it was only a dollar, I'm just like, you should just say it's a one-time use. Like, don't play with me, you know? Okay, this next one, ugh. <laughs> I, really, I really don't like this one, I really don't. Uh, this is from the brand. First Aid Beauty. It's called our Eye Duty Triple Remedy. It's supposed to brighten under eye circles. It says it's safe for sensitive skin. Um, what else? And they say that the metal applicator, which is this thing right here, is supposed to be good for smoothing out the product under the eyes. I got this because I actually saw, uh, what's her face? Um, oh, Miss Rosh Posh using this, talking about how she camouflages her dark circles. So I was like, oh snap, if this works for her, it's gonna work for me. And it literally does nothing. There's no difference from when I use this on my under eyes and when I don't use this. Like, I still need a full coverage concealer. You know, if I don't, you can still see the dark circles. There's nothing fantastic about it. I bought it at Sephora, so it was damn sure pricey. And I just feel like I didn't need to waste that money. Why? Why? So I'm glad it works for her, but it just was a flop for me. Okay, so I've got another hair product for you guys. And I know some of you guys love this product. And you're probably going to kill me for mentioning this. But I just got to say this because even the best hair products don't work for everybody. Uh, this is the Uncle Funky's Daughter Curl Magic Curl Stimulator. I've got this big old jug, 18 fluid ounces. I've only barely used like this much of it. There's a lot left. It just sucks. I feel like every time I use this on my hair, my hair turns out so dry. I have used the actual Uncle Funky's Daughter moisturizers with it because that's how I was shown how to use it from the actual president of the company. Because I did work at their booth for one of their events. So I feel like I'm very knowledgeable in how to use it. But it just dries my hair out. And you know, I mean, I, I appreciate that a little bit of this really does go a long way. Like if I split my hair in four sections, one pump is good enough. And it has a lot of slip. That's awesome. But why should I use something that dries my hair out like this when there are a million other products that are cheaper than this, more affordable, and are gonna moisturize my hair? Like for example, this kind of curl jelly, this is from Design Essentials, the curl forming custard. This works way better than this. And this is cheaper, you know what I mean? So I believe this is something like 25 bucks. Yeah, it's gonna last you a while. I mean, I don't know, Ugh, I just I just can't even deal with it anymore. <laughs> it's been sitting in my room for a while, so I really need to find somebody to give it away to because it's just, uh-uh. <laughs> then we have this highlighter packet right here. So 
Um, City Color, you guys know, it's a really great kind of affordable beauty brand and they have a lot of really great products. So when I saw this highlighting uh, quad, I was like, oh snap, you know, I'm gonna try this thing out. And if I can open this thing, I mean, look, it looks like it's gonna be really lovely, but it's not. It swatches beautifully. And as soon as you apply it on your skin, I feel like it highlights texture and it just looks like chunky. It's not like smooth, finely melt highlight like the Laura Geller or the Tarte highlighters. It's chunky and like just glitter on your face. And I just want to look like I'm glowing, not like I literally just took a bunch of glitter and like threw it on, you know what I mean? I just was really disappointed in the quality of this product. I feel like they could have done a lot better. I love their blush palette, so I was just like, what the heck? What the heck is this? Um, so if you guys see this City Color highlighting palette, don't even waste your time, guys, because it's not worth it. So there you go. Those were all the products that I bought this year that I was just like, ugh, you know, ugh. And usually I find friends or relatives to give them away to, but these I've just had lingering and I'm really just, I'm ready to let them go. I wish I could have left them in 2016, <laughs> but it didn't happen. Um, but I hope this helps some of you guys if you're interested in any of these products. I mean, sure, go ahead and try it. it never knock something until you've tried it. But I'm just letting you guys know what my experience was. I did not like those. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!